I've got about I said I make it two o'clock. Uh, my name is William Perrin, we'll talk about local and hopefully you're here to talk about uh, local websites and the council and how the two can work together better and so on. Um, do we want to do a quick round room or a few too many people to say who's interested in what? Yes, no? Yes? Yes, do it then. Um, so very, very quick. Uh, Simon from Barnett, uh, built a hybrid website because the community can do it themselves. Good. talking to at least one national charity and hopefully a few more about how they can relate to hyperlocal blocks. So I think there are parallels between how they do that and how councils do it. Which national I'll talk to you later. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, right, Shannon, I'm Keynes. I'm not a, a web designer or work art up in IT, but uh, I'm a leader to try to understand more about the public website, but also a community website. I'm a trustee at a community organisation and we've just developed a new website. I want to see how we can interact with the communities. Uh, Phil Jewett from Leeds Council, we are just developing a new CMS for internet and website and we have also just canned our um, newspaper, but we have started a new one. Uh, uh, Scott from Sully Hall, with an A in being here. <laughs> um, we are actually in the process of redoing our website as well, and some would hope to include uh, small local websites that, um, for communities that don't have their own sort of thing, and just personal interest in like local blogging and stuff. Ben from Hull. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he was going to come in. But I thought you were going school. Oh, well. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Sharon from UK Parliament, ex Westminster, Southern London, wherever. Um, I'm here largely because I, I studied this at university and I've got a bit of a strange interest in it on um, the relationship between local parties and local papers as they can and I'm Eddie, I'm Kurt Mann, newly the Comms Office of the Policy Council. Um, I inherited a world in which we kill that house newspaper. Might go down great. So I'm going to this is what I think we should do. John, behind the single eye at the back, we can take part of Yeah, I'm John Popham. I help people use social technology for social good. I walk around pointing cameras at people and shoving iPhones up under their noses and stuff like that so that everybody can share their best practice. And I'm not a cricket broadcaster, as some people think I am. <laughs> <laughs> if you've not had John shove an iPhone at you, then you'll be arranged afterwards. Um, right, so let's have a quick round room. I'm William Perrin, and for years I've run this website, King's Cross, which is about to celebrate its fifth birthday. Um, I 
did this because I had extremely severe social problems on my street cars on fire, uh, you know, gangs of young people committing crime and cracking in a caravan, and murders, all sorts of shit, just literally underneath my window. It was a very, very bad area. We did years of community action, years and years and years of traditional meetings and stuff. I ended up in desperation in 2006, setting up a website to manage the information. I've never written a line of HTML in my life. I hope I die that way, frankly. I have no interest in code or that shit. I just did these websites because they're very easy to do, and informal to do them. Um, we, the other day, uh, I'll talk for a few minutes if that's okay, and then we'll just kind of open it up and have a chat. And I can call up websites to hear if you want. I'm not going to try and run the room for this. A few days ago, it was Tuesday, Thursday evening, after a couple of years of dialogue and gentle nagging, um, the police, the local King's Cross Police, the Safe Neighbours team, flew to a web chat. Um, we got the Chief Inspector and the Police Sergeant from the local neighbors, Safe Neighbours and our team to do a two hour web chat with the people. We got um, you know, covered live statistics, were about just over 100 questions and 46 uh, viewers from through Covered Live. It cost me nothing, of course, because it's covered live, it's completely free, and I ran it in my typepad blog. Uh, which I pay you know, eight or nine pounds a month or something like that. Um, it was a big experiment for the police. It was the first, lovely, uh, the first web chat done, ever done by the Met Police on the police website. They're very pleased with it, and with any luck, they'll press release this out on, on Monday. Um, we do a lot of work with the council because this website came out of civic action. It came out of getting things done. I have absolutely no interest in the web things for their own sake. I only want to do them if they actually help in the real world or help my very small business. This is a good example. Uh, King's Trust is undergoing what's euphemistically called regeneration which means lots of people want to come and drink for that, um, as far as I can make out. So we've seen lots and lots of licensing applications coming in for pubs. In this case, reopening an old pub. Now what happened here, my website, this was about a year ago, I think, my website had been running for a while. A person who lived near this pub, uh, which is a good three quarters of a mile, I think, from where I used to live, um, she sent me an email saying, uh, there's this note that's gone up outside the pub, I don't understand what to do, can you help me with it on the website thing, like I've seen you do with other people. So I um, basically copied, found the notice on the council's website, copied and pasted it in. Oh no, I copied and pasted her emailing, which is a very cogent um, breakdown of why you shouldn't reopen the pub. Um, and then the nice thing about this uh, is that um, Claire here, I don't know who, which Claire is, well, sorry, the screen's not very in focus. If anyone can see a remote and can refocus the projector, that'd be great. Claire comes in and they actually looked out uh, who, who was registered as a director of the pub company. It turns out it was a student. When this guy comes in, I submitted the following objection and will attend the licensing committee to oppose the application. Uh, that's our council. So our elected member comments on the website and then actually turns that into practical action on the ground by going to the meeting. Um, so a very close relationship there between with us and uh, the Council of Democracy. And we do lots of um, simple things like, you know, broken shit as I call it on the street. So uh, I take photos of stuff, that lamppost, not in the best of health, it has to be said. And I report them to um, the council through a contact is not a unified contact central operation by email. And then I put pictures on the website. I've been doing this for years now. And we found that there's a sort of you know anecdotal and it seems quite quite a um, good correlation between putting photos of stuff on the website and them actually getting fixed. Um, rather than disappearing into that kind of private black hole. You ring the council, you have a private transaction. Um, I know some of you get our from councils, but the reality is services fail a lot. Um, you get a service failure, no one else can know about it, and when you make it public, suddenly it becomes uh, something that is sort of tacit political pressure. And there's more of those than loads, loads of pictures of this stuff, <coughs> which is kind of regular, regular issues in, in this park. Do you take it off when it gets fixed? No. It's part of my it's part of the historic archive, and my website gets archived by the British Library International Digital Archive. Do so, you need to post an update saying it's fixed? I uh, can't be bothered anymore, no. And what's the point? Although, I mean, the fact that, I mean, from a local council perspective, it'd be nice if you reported the issue, it's lovely, and you made it public that, you know, if the local council's actually done something about it, then you've sort of said, yeah, great, you've done it. It might have taken three weeks or six months. Remember, my relationship with the council has been depersonalised by their choice to have a contact centre. So I have no particular officer or personal service behind it like in thank. I just have this generic kind of contact centre. If an officer, we get a lot of this with graffiti, um, have a really good environmental crime team, and a good relationship with the officers there. And they clean stuff up, I will thank them yeah. conspicuously. Um, but on the whole, this is a transactional service delivery failure. So uh, I'm a citizen, and I'm saying, well, you've actually failed in the delivery of the service, which um, I'm paying you to do. Can you please clean it up? And I'm surprised that you would be nice to the council to go on a photo of it without a graffiti item and, and send that to you. Delighted. Yeah, it's delighted. Remember, this is what I'm going to go back and say, yeah, see. Well, yeah, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, if the council informed you to say hi, we've actually kind of done it. Comment. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
huge variety of information. And they essentially the site's becoming an information relay site. So if people who want to get stuff out into Healy, uh, send send it to the Healy, to this uh, to Healy Development Trust to run away. Penny, the receptionist at the UK online centre there, she's a WordPress.com site. Um, and uh, she just plays copies and pastes up there. They've got hundreds and hundreds of articles. And they get about, they're very happy, on good days they get 200, 200, 200 through the evening. They're not getting many comments. No, no. Uh, uh, you, know, you don't have to drive site comments, you don't need comments necessarily. So, my King's Cross site, I've got 1,100 articles and I've got 1,400 comments, and I'm very happy with that. Um, I don't drive the site for comments. If you want a comment site, you comments. You can drive it for comments and do so it. I, I, that was, it wasn't critical, but that's different ways of doing it. Yes, that's right. What because are the they're using, using merits of having well, watched the bank? They're using a blogging platform as a convenient way of building a website rather than because they want to blog. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly how I got started. I wanted an information transmission media, not necessarily as much interaction as you might have on a really busy blog. Um, so, uh, so if we look at. That's a really good point. Um, and what happens um, here with this site is it's run by a community asset. So it's run by essentially by the community development trust who the staff, and one of their staff runs the site, so it's being run within the spirit of the trust and what they do. Um, my site in King's Cross is also slightly vulnerable to patch, like if one of the bus, it would change a bit, but I've got five other people who, who comment, uh, sorry, who, who write articles for it, so it's pretty it's poorly placed. And the reason the site's been successful is that it is pro community and is straight down and in fact, the reason I don't get many comments is I, I refuse to have party politics, religion, and sport on the site. Don't tell the places you can go and do that. And then that means, of course, there isn't just so much to find. Um, another more aggressive site is in the middle of nowhere. This is, um, uh, this is the parish in rural Shropshire. Um, it's run by, it's completely opposite to all these other sites. It's run by my guy, David. And you can see he updates uh, sparse, and they're quite short. But this is an area where hardly any people live. So to some extent, it's appropriate. Um, parish style. <coughs> that? Nutrient was oh, stored in the third one, sorry, that's there for you. So okay, so no one still has to make a poll. Um, that site led bizarrely to this one. Uh, where <laughs> we um, <laughs> no, no, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Um, we we um, we bumped into the BBC Archer scriptwriters and they said, oh, we'd love to do uh, an in-character sign for the Archers. And we said, they oh, you can't be serious. And they said, there we are. Um, and, um, me. and so we showed them several sites, and the ones they liked the most were, um, were that, that, that uh, Clun Valley site and the uh, Parkwich site, the Parkwich in Derbyshire. And so we just then did a workshop with them and a series of blog posts where they now, the Archer scriptwriters, write this in character site uh, for the bridge. Uh, it even has spelling mistakes in here and there in our systems to make it more authentic. Um, it's done by Jennifer Aldridge, I think, does the science, or, um, or Kerry, as his name, the scriptwriter. Um, and uh, this is a little gem. And uh, they're just copying, this is the BBC, just trying to get a feel for This is not one. Um, we got a call from this guy, um, Ian Siddle, I think his name was, and uh, he said, I'd like to come and see you. I said, well, we don't know who We kind of went to our invoices, and they're just checking their money or something, and, um, which is a problem. And uh, he kind of turned up with a box of chocolates just before Christmas, and I said, thank you for your help. And he said, well, we still don't know who you are. And he said, no, I copied the instructions on your website to create a website, and uh, I did this thing in Kidderminster. And uh, he's, uh, he's kind of, you know, very, very keen on the litter picking and community cleanup. And this site basically uh, is celebrating young people uh, who pick litter. And it's just really, really sweet, a lovely, lovely site. And one of the nice things about it is it breaks the rules of most public sector websites and it's got lots of pictures of kids on it. <laughs> um, and you know, there's this extreme reaction to child safety issues, which means you can tell them very hard to do. And he's got loads of pictures of children. Uh, it's absolutely lovely. It's celebrating young people doing you know, totally pro community stuff. Again, it's simple WordPress.com uh, site doesn't have something to run. Uh, other sites around there, we've got someone from Sheffield in the room, haven't we? Um, I wouldn't bother with a hyper-level strategy, just pile into Sheffield Forum. I mean, 
Well, that's where the audience is. Yeah, no. You've got 145,000 people in a city of 150,000. And if you talk about in Sheffield, it is not well liked in Sheffield. It's only people get five million comments. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Most of them are um, ranting. Because it's anonymous, because it is not uh, uh, a very direct or coherent community. So I mean, I, I use so it basically for, for, for a recommendation, but most of the stuff in there tends to rank very, very quickly. I think that's a, I, I, I don't feel like it statistically stacks up. I mean, you know, there isn't a lot of ranting about knitting in here. You know, you've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, they're, they're not on each other's throat or the knee. And I think certainly, yeah, if you go in some bits, it will be. So I, I would, if I was doing some research, why not? I would take a segment of work. There's, um, there's a, uh, uh, there have been numerous approaches to the, the people who run the Czech forums who have sold the refuse to develop it in any kind of coherent way and just leave it as it is. Which is why nobody's able to, to harness it. In, in but you see that you're misunderstanding the word open science work, I think you want to harness them. Well, it's the same way is, is, is be able to work with them to try and, you know, uh, uh, to try and engage with it. You, 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 know, you would be very hard pushed to get any local councils to come on the side because there is no kind of moderation, because there is nothing to stop uh, stop it coming to land, which you would do as soon as you've got politics on that. Yeah. Um, so being able to, to create communities in which um, the <laughs> politicians or the, 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 the officers are able to engage with the community rather than, rather than just the community engage with itself. To, 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 to create something in which that could that channel could be open for positive communication. It's, it's just not possible on Czech forums. Okay. Right, so, uh, you think they're on the ground? Or, I think you could do things. Because uh, that's where the audience is. Mm -hmm. Mike, bits and pots uh, in Stoke. Okay. Hello. 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 So in Stoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in Stoke now. We're in Stoke. Stoke on train. Now, uh, Bits <coughs> has a challenging relationship with time with the council many. You've, you've, had, you've heard that kind of dialogue from the council many times. Yeah, it's coming back here along. Yeah, and they just won't talk to you and stuff. But what have you, you got? What did you do here? Um, well, we, like, blocked the election because uh, the council, for whatever reason, don't want to or haven't got the ability to do it, and we did quite quickly. Um, so we just set up a covid live session and we just quite blocked the, the whole election night. We count the results, uh, put the photos up, and we've also done two and three there and asked the leader session. So we actually got the council leader sat in front of a laptop. Uh, for about an hour, and just kind of answering questions from people that were just walking onto the website. Exactly, yeah. And just having, you know, having a conversation, you can ask anything, um, anything that was answered on the day was answered afterwards and posted. Um, That's exactly the environment where, where, where council officials, officers, and, and uh, politicians feel they are able to, to participate. Um, only if there's somebody that comes in for them. Council officers won't do that because it's like, well, what about the risk? It's a risk assessment. We, we in the council, don't do that. Certainly, certainly in Stoke, you don't know, anyway. But yeah, I think some councils um, uh, are being helped to, to, to try and uh, engage on, those, on, on that basis. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to, you know, by actually showing them that it's, it's not as bad as they think it think It's like the dentist. And that's why we're able to show them as It's not as bad as that. But we need an alternative to Sheffield Forum to show this podcast. Sheffield Forum is as bad as that. I think, I think it has the same sort of thing. I mean, it's, it certainly has, has the reputation of being as scary and as toxic as that. But I think what's been, um, I think the sort of persistence has, has helped. And, and, and there have been people who've sort of taken a chance and jumped into bits and parts. But bits and parts have certainly had just as much of the kind of definitely the rants. I mean, Mike, Mike spends a huge amount of time on moderating everything on there, um, and I think it, I think it's I think it is really really difficult um, for people to participate. Um, but it is a little bit of that sort of dive in mm -hmm. and, and keep going. And, and, um, and, and there are a lot of people who sort of want to do the positive stuff as well. So it goes in little waves with bits and parts, sort of watching it. People want to contribute, but. Um, I think the fact that it's been independent has been a big help to the council in some ways because it shows what can be done without them taking the risk. Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting and, uh, example. 
this is Claire's citing uh, first one, so. Um, yeah, no, we, uh, this is just a site which is just an alternative tourist board. Um, uh, Burslem's, Burslem's economy is, is um, shot to pieces and uh, everybody worries about Stoke generally and um, loads and loads of reputation issues. So this is just a very simple site to kind of um, encourage people to visit. Um, but I think it needs... The nice thing about WordPress sites is that you can invite lots and lots of contributors. So um, what I need to do with that next is kind of invite a mixture of people, so like businesses and council people and all of that to contribute. But I think that probably shows how you can set the agenda slightly differently in the same city. So we have got political sites, we've got sort of sites that are about this is a different story from my place, um, things like that. It's so one of the so the talk about local the Angles um, in community where we we'll actually dive into community and help people create a site and support of their own. We'll do that on CARP compliance, but then with some strict sort of ethical criteria that we agree amongst ourselves that it's not a client voice we're seeking to propagate. Um, it's very much the voice of the community. Um, and we've done this all over the country about 150 other places now. Um, and we have a very, very good feel for what works and what doesn't work. In fact, from some of our own experience, we're running sites ourselves constantly in communities, but also working with people all over the country. There's from everywhere, everywhere we've got a small bit of site in Dublin and Ireland, we've got sites in Dartmoor, sites in Red Car, we've got sites all over the place. And um, a few generic things kind of emerge from that, um, which is that generally the free platforms that are out there are far more adequate um, for people who run their own community sites. Our general rule is never build a platform. It is no matter what your intentions may be. If you're putting loads of money into a platform, that's when the girl is going to actually work with people. But the successful sites are only Good people are the worst technology in the world, they can be really pressure, but the good side is really about It's never about the technology in the world. No matter what added functionality you might think you want from it, yeah, it doesn't need to really work. Um, and uh, having said it often enough, it's about the people. Um, it's about people who have a burning need to communicate. Um, they need to have something to say. Uh, the internet is full of blogs and websites where people have nothing actually to say. Uh, the best sites are sites where people on the ground have something that they need to communicate. Because either they are passionate about it, because it may be running a scout troop, a church, a mosque, a town, a chapel, um, or because they have an acute problem they need to fix that makes them go out want to do that. The other thing we learned quite curiously is that you can't judge those people very easily at first encounter, second encounter. We always find that um, we often have people push towards us and someone say, This person's a natural, and they've got a voice for the web. And then it turns out they have not um, We had quite a few reports of training sessions uh, where we train trainers and our trainers running right around the countryside where they say, Yeah, we have this great room for the people, there are eight of them. And they were quite really engaged, and this guy just sat in the back and didn't say anything. And then we ring them a few months later and say, How the website's coming on? And they say, Yeah, it's just that guy who sat in the back and didn't say anything. He's the one who's got a really good website. Um, <laughs> we can't work that out. And when we work with Hugh and Kevin and others and all sorts of people, none of, I think we all kind of agree that there is no recipe for finding a perfect person. So our approach tends to be engage as many people as you can, uh, because only then can you tell that one of them or someone will come out and try not to over target. And it takes a lot of time, it takes an awful lot of time. So the, We've been working with people for two years, um, and they're slowly getting there now. Um, and uh, when we have patient clients, that works really well because um, you know, as it takes time to make this stuff, it's like making beer or some wine. It does take a little time for it to, to mature. It's not enough. Occasionally, if you, if you land an area that has very high social capital and massive interconnectedness, you get a fantastic website really, really quickly. Um, we find we start increasingly seeing as well as we go around the country, working with mainly deprived or isolated communities. Facebook is really something to dominate. Ground for local communication. It's a hugely limited platform, it's hugely limited in what you can do with it, but it's what people are able to use and they're confident in it and they know how to communicate it. Um, and so we're increasingly working with people and with Facebook itself to actually understand um, how the websites work. So I'll kind of shut up now. Mm -hmm. Just last the conversation I just placed. Um, only because you've built hundreds of sites then, or how people build hundreds of sites. Yeah, most of them actually fail. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's probably all right. The general question about is quite often local issues are, I mean, the one you've done, you know, obviously it's still an ongoing long term issue, so you're keeping the site running. It's not all of a sudden, a year later, everything's on Fedora, you know, people aren't really complaining anymore, you get rid of it. But of course, lots of times issues come up where they're, you know, imagine on planning applications and things are short term, you know, six months, it's either approved or not, or what have you, sort of thing. 
local hyper local sites and stuff, which you you know, especially like on WordPress and these free ones, could you almost treat them as disposable, short term, here's the issue, let's have a discussion about it, let's see what it is. And the weather rightly or wrongly, however your opinion has to be about the issue, great, it's run its course, move on. Yeah. You know, like as I mean like the sort of disposable short term deal with as opposed to having to spend a lot of time and effort to you know, build it up and maintain it. Sorry? Then you're looking at something. Yeah, the, the campaign, campaign site, but, but it's still a, a little <laughs> hyper local issue, though. It's a similar sort of thing as opposed to just a community site. Yeah, this site came out of campaign in uh, 2008 9 um, about the new one way traffic system that's being brought into Scarborough. Um, and um, uh, the, basically, they put all the traffic lights and stuff in and they haven't turned the system on. And there was a campaign about it, and this lady uh, who runs the street, who's now Janet, that's it, um, she. Um, Created this 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 group, uh, which has uh, how many members? I mean, it's got two thousand members in quite a small town, and um, it served its purpose to drive the campaign. They tr traditional position alongside it, took the petition to the town hall, and so on. And it's still kind of running a bit. Um, but a good campaigner, if they create a network and a community and a single issue on the web, won't throw that away. They'll they'll know it's valuable and will we'll evolve a bit. We do see sites that I'm just trying to think. Where they do single issue and stop. But yeah, it is disposable, but the hard work is building the network. It's actually yeah. building the human interconnections. And of course, Facebook allows you to accelerate that massively. You know, oh, yeah, no, I agree. But the, the, the depth of the engagement is quite shallow. Other questions? No, I was just thinking um, one of the things I wanted to answer is the depth of the local newspaper. Yeah. The issue of the local newspaper. But it's been proved, you know, with the closing down of the Guardian's attentive model that they're trying to monetize that. Yeah. So they're closed, the company's good, and that the leads are. Edinburgh pilots, um, and Eric Nichols has stamped his feet all over county newspapers. So, is there a place for hyper local in sort of some sustaining the model of keeping local citizens informed? I mean, the council's argument for having local newspapers, they have legal obligations to help with what's happening in the community. It's the local newspaper you could get, say, as an example, the market failed because it just failed to make, either make money out of that or was successfully informed people about what's happening in the community. Is there an argument for the money that's gone into? Uh, how to make difference today being diverted into supporting communities and informing themselves using things like that. Yeah, I think there is, as long as it's done sensibly. Mm. So, um, and sensibly, we find that people generally don't want to use council provided platforms. And uh, this is quite a way that you But they could take council so, money and do that. Um, yeah, they could take council money, and I see what you're getting at, because you're mm. saying they give council money to me. Yeah. And I could go out and train, I'd love them. I, I'm all for that. But, <laughs> um, obviously. But no, and we are, we are doing that. We do have council clients who literally do this. Um, either specific allocations that go into this area or here's some money we want you to work with you the way you do over a period of time so it's lovely when they do that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but you don't pass that money on to the, the, the site owners like no, no no we, we use you yeah, to it's for us it's our training time yeah, yeah so otherwise, we're, otherwise we're the become reliant on that money no no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no so i wouldn't say no certainly wouldn't encourage anyone to the money directly to the mm -hmm. sites themselves um, occasionally you can justify that when they get to it's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, but if I have a contract with the councils and they <laughs> they buy our training time as trainers um, or community active, you know, community intervention officers, that kind of thing. So, um, and sometimes, although we much prefer to train local trainers and embed the skills in the community, that just works better. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, because citizens are empowering themselves to communicate to each other about stuff that's relevant to them. Um, but there are issues here because you won't get coverage, the type of coverage you get that demo local demo democratic systems are used to from local newspapers. They have a different type of thing that's evolved over 100 years with, with local politicians. So, um, for instance, uh, I'm no local high local clients I know of go to courts because there's rules about contempt of court and that mm -hmm. stuff, and courts run in the daytime when you're at work. But you could arguably say so. that that's not happening anyway. If you look at a lot of the yeah. newspapers, they don't report courts because no, they don't yeah. have the resources. Yeah. Um, Can I add a point on this whole issue? Because obviously, one of the big revenue sources for local papers forever has been uh, public notices, mm -hmm. and it's a legal obligation for council to put them in those publications mm -hmm. and to spend the money in that place. Yeah. Now it could be, I mean, it's a controversial viewpoint, but it could be that perhaps the time is right to look at the legislation around that mm -hmm. as to where that requirement is, because mm -hmm. if you've got a very active community website, 
that actually engages with more of your local community, why should you spend council taxpayers' money putting it into something that's perhaps not read by as many people? Um, and, and so yeah. the whole issue probably should... So we should have a distribution model of, of print newspapers. When I, I worked in Sutton for years, and if you lived in the poor area, uh, which was a poor area for um, target for advertisers, they'd only get a paper maybe two weeks out of four. They deliver it to the posher areas every week, and they deliver it to the yeah. estates now and again. And then if you live in a flat with a buzzer, you probably don't get one. So actually, it's not really an effective means of informing the entire community. It only works in some communities. And perhaps yeah. a, a mobile phone alert on planning applications would be yeah. better use. Time. But you know that would require a change in legislation. It would. So um, I put together a proposal <coughs> for our council to scrap the council quarterly newsletter that it sends to every resident at a cost of about three hundred thousand um, pounds, and in, 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 in exchange invest money that it already has ring fenced for individual wards. It, it, it basically has £50,000 room for each ward to spend on whatever it wants. And my proposal is that some wards would do a pilot scheme to seed, either through training or through making templates available to local residents to set up their own community site to allow councillors to communicate digitally and do a lot of the things that the council have done through this newsletter, but actually digitally, which would allow engagement. Because the problem with the newsletter is, or at least the advantage of the newsletter for the council's perspective is that no one can answer back. You know, the newsletter doesn't talk back to you. So I put this proposal to them, and I could only just deafen in silence. Um, the biggest argument that came back was, well, there were two. The honest one was the newsletter is a propaganda tool. We, we rely on it to make sure residents know what a fantastic job we're doing. <laughs> and, and so they'll carry on voting for us. And that's actually said to me, that's what they said. That's, that's argument number one. Argument number two is, with newsletters, we know that one, it goes to everybody, and two, everyone can, well, we know everybody's addresses and everyone can read. So we know we've got universal coverage of the borough, because we know it goes through everybody's door four times a year. But what about all the people who don't have the internet, who don't have mobile phones, who don't know how to use the internet, don't want to be on Twitter, it's not fair to them. So we have to go to the lowest common denominator. Yes. And those two arguments, I have found it so difficult to shift. I just can't get over it. I've tried explaining that actually digital is a really good propaganda tool as well, and in fact, much more effective because it's more hyper-local than something that's council-wide. But I can't really shift the second problem. I can't come up with reasons why they should move money from something that's universal to something that only people who are digitally engaged already um, can access. So if anyone has got any good counter-arguments or strategies to get around either of those two things, it's brilliant. Can I, <laughs> I name-check name something that was done at a, uh, a local by social session? Yes. Um, in that and Blackburn, wasn't it? Uh, I think it's print tender or but we can. Which is um, print uh, tender. Print ten. P R I N T. Yeah, one zero. No, I uh, think it's digits. Print tender or but we can. Which is it's not a solution. Is a, a bunch of people who are saying ah, it must be try googling for print tender. Yeah. Um, yeah. These things have to work out really expensive. No, no, it's, it's a, basically a, a bunch of people who are trying to address that issue. So, the, the inclu digital the, the, inclusion so issue. So basically it's, a, it's about, if you have a digital mechanism which then translates into being able to print something out and distribute that through communities rather than getting it, rather than paying people to go and put it through every door, yeah. put it in put it in every post office and get everyone who signed up to say, I'll print There's that. a slide share at the top as well. Yeah, it, basically what that means is it doesn't exist. There is a slide share about it. Yes, it doesn't, doesn't exist yet. It's a, Okay. Two points, if I just raise two points on that. Um, from when you had a centralised newspaper, is that more corporate? But when you split it up to ward, does then it, is it likely to become more political if it's based on the ward councillors? Is, the, is there the, that aspect? Um, the central newsletter has one page across the quarter devoted to one ward. That's how local it gets. Everything else is about, you know, haven't we done a good job and just won an award for the best council newspaper in the country? Oh, fantastic. You know, isn't our street cleaning great? 
aren't our bin collections great? It's all that kind of thing. There's nothing about actual issues at all. There's all kind of two different services though, and that if you look at the LGA reputation campaign and what the council are legally obliged to provide, you know, they they are effectively scored on what people think of them. So they do have this kind of practice like uh, propaganda campaign. Um, and if they can't uh, get their message across through the local media, which they often can't because the arguments around them are oversimplified, then they, they do the, their argument for producing this in the magazine is the only way they can to get their message across. So this is a, if this is a 45 minute session, we've got about five minutes. Sorry. No, that's not true. Any other points, John? Uh, just two quick points. One, I liked your point about the need, never needing to build a new platform. Three words, your square mile. Uh, another word, £839,000, but I'll move on from that. Um, the, the other thing was, uh, there was a report online a few, couple of weeks ago about uh, I think it was an American newspaper which had moved totally onto Facebook, about your point yeah. about Facebook. Yeah. And it, would, it achieved an awful lot in terms of engagement. What they were saying was Facebook is really horrible as a publishing tool because you can't archive things, you can't search things. Um, I actually phoned a comment on there which was why not use a WordPress blog which automatically posts to Facebook because then you can search and archive the WordPress blog and you will still get your posts into Facebook. So I just wondered if that's... So on, on, on your square mile, um, I think there's a general rule that there is no need to build a new platform. And there is a different case if you have a national ambition and, and this is a critically different thing, a decent marketing plan to go with it. The vast majority, I've seen an awful lot of hyper-local web platforms come and go over the last three or four years, and none of them have been accompanied by meaningful marketing. One of the interesting things about your Mark is it's why it's superb at marketing. So let, let's see what happens with that. It could be very, very interesting. But we don't actually know, of course, what form it's going to take yet. So we don't know if it is going to be this sort of platform or not, or whether it will be an information distribution or We just don't know. So I'm, I'm not prepared to prejudge it or get, get one into that. Facebook is tricky. Um, it's tricky at many levels, but <coughs> increasingly we're just sort of going where the audience is because it's quicker and easier. Mm. I just want to go back to a point you raised earlier about um, people don't like council provided platforms. Yeah. Is, is that what you mean for like using hyper local? So there's no point in me putting up a local well, uk well, area on a website for people to yeah. have social engagement with, sort of thing. Better off doing noel.wordpress.com sort of thing, using it that way if you're trying to provide some way for people to be included digitally. As where they might uh, yes, feel I, excluded I think, already. If, if you, I think it would be a mistake to put a WordPress.org install on a spare bit of server space you have, and then say, we've got this amazing place for so many other people to come and do this stuff. Um, all I've experienced on the ground is that people want to have the feeling of ownership and control, so it's their space. Um, they're much uh, much happier doing it that way, it seems now. But it's to say that you won't get some people to put yeah. but I don't think you get as many. I think you'd be better off investing in the investment in skills. Yeah, no, just because we do get quite a lot of comments saying, oh, we want a local site for a local community sort of thing, can you provide one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, well, Send them to WordPress.com, yeah, just show, yeah, yeah. show them, you know. But the, as the, a the council, we can't provide, you know, we don't have, yeah. we can build it more private, we will yeah. soon, hopefully. But we're better off doing something like WordPress or a free blogging tool. Just going back to the sort of question about, you know, value for money and everything, and, I, and I've, I've seen this from both ends, I've spent uh, about 18 months trying to make a hyper-local newspaper work in my community, because I had all the motivation of, um, you this know. This was a print newspaper. Yeah, it was a printed newspaper, and we want, we didn't know what was going on in our area, there was no democratic accountability, and I ended up just trying to sell advertising, and that instead of doing all the things I wanted to do. So my regret was, why didn't I spend 18 months just trying to get people online, um, you know, and, and, and deal with those problems? And in answer to the question about, you know, what should councils spend their money on, if I had a sort of wish list, it would be, just, just to get people together, like that costs and that takes organisation um, that a lot of community organisers are quite burned out and struggle with. Um, but just getting people together for a cup of tea or you know whatever um, attracts them a lunch does get people out, and it and it creates a lot of the same effects because you can exchange information, you can perhaps do a hands-on session so that they can start their own websites, um, you can be. And what you'll end up with, or what we are ending up with um, already, is an ecosystem of local sites. And again, a good use of resources to sort of aggregate all those sites, and, and so that you know people know about each other. It's not that they then all have to get into a room and agree who's going to have control of the site, and there's only one. We, we, we're way beyond that. We, we, we want to make best use of the ecosystem, and, and that's that. That would be a because because there are going to be people who can't read, and there are people who don't have those skills, and all of that. 
so you can share the same information and get it to them, maybe do a few printed copies. Um, but that's what I'd love to see more investment in, is because that's the stuff communities yeah. in areas like mine struggle with, just getting people together is, is really, really difficult, because people are quite disillusioned and angry and they're stuck in their houses and they've got nowhere to go. And you get them online, and once they're online, you can't stop them, you know, they'll, they'll be off and all this stuff will happen. Um, just to, it's a nice example. Um, where I live, there's a, a website called Streetline. And it's an independent company and they've got an awful lot of money into marketing it. Um, but it's really working well now they've got 1,000 people in Madison using it. Because you've got all the forums where people are discussing it, but then in the same feed you've got um, press releases from Ones with Council when you've got a news link to the Ones with Guardian, which I'd never look at otherwise, but now I click through news feeds from there. And, um, and the council aren't funding it, but the council have embraced it. They advertise it in their newsletter. They probably charge street like for advertising. But the Ones with Council communications team then have an account on it, so they will answer things that come up and communicate in the forums, answer questions so that way. Street Life have got two or three press drive sites out there. Battersea, I think there's two teams in some ways. Well, yeah, it starts And they're pouring a lot of money into marketing. Yeah. Which, and I don't know, I'm no it might be sustainable or not, I just don't know. They get no, this, this is not many people have seen this. No, they get local businesses to advertise on these sites, so they get money that way. But then recently they pressed the button and made it nationwide, and immediately it doesn't take off because you haven't got that critical mass anywhere to. Plus, the empty restaurant property. Yeah. Yeah. So, but maybe the council yeah. got behind that site or another site and help to push it in that area, then you've got a ready-made platform to probably think of. An interesting risk there is, at what point is the council embracing something helpful and at what point is it you know, giving it some kind of authoritative yeah. stamp of approval which loses all its values and kind of value. You know. And then people start complaining to the council as opposed to, you know, a lewd comment as opposed to back to street life because the council's given its Stamp of authority. Well, I, I haven't yeah. seen any yeah. sites that have been ruined by the council smothering it in love. But there might be some. Um, yeah, it's a question of voice and tone and style. A lot of the conversations that are, on a day like this are about how do we find the appropriate way of engaging that meets all these 8,000 rules we've got in the background to kind of the traditional patterns of behaviour. And uh, as we all know, and I say it every time, that someone has to take a risk find a way of managing that risk uh, so that um, it's, it's, if you fail, the impacts aren't too bad. Um, and I've done that myself, I don't say that when I was working in central government, I don't say that lightly, I know it's not easy, but um, usually that's the best way to get started. Or you're, you have to wait a long time to have the right leadership to tell you what's going to happen. So we didn't, we didn't miss a lot of newspapers. Did, did you want to do a bit more? Newspapers actually, well, okay. Um, other questions or observations? I've been, um, as I mentioned earlier, talking to a national charity about hyperlocal blocks. And I've been quoting you with your statistic that you've got more people in your area yes. reading your blog than watch news now. Yes. <laughs> and that's caused quite a revelation to me. I mean, still, I feel sort happy to say to me, um, our press officers are, all, are too busy to deal with hyperlocal bloggers. Okay. Too busy talking to the wrong people. Um, or we've got nobody in our organisation whose job it is to do social media. Yeah. So it's the, it's the same old struggle that we've had with the local government and elsewhere. Um, but they, there is a, a, a terrible lack of knowledge of what hyperlocal blogs are and where they exist and how to find them. Um, and this charity recently, well it's the RSPB, uh, and they recently launched a very big uh, nature reserve. And they didn't contact, to my knowledge, any hyperlocal bloggers, and there are several on their doorstep. Um, and now I'm helping them to get up and running with uh, their own Twitter stream or whatever. But they could have, they, they missed the boat, they had a big event, they could have made quite a lot of noise about it in both social media and on um, the neighbouring kind of local blogs. But I, I'm not singling out the RSP, it just happens to be the one that I do some work with, with both as a volunteer and otherwise. But um, I see the same thing right across the board. Uh, well, you know, yeah. there are obviously honourable exceptions. But a lot, a lot of the voluntary organisations and charities don't, don't seem to appreciate what hyperlocal local blogs are or how, how they can relate to them and indeed frankly make use of them. No, it's, it's an emergent scene. You know, it's, in America there's been a local blogging scene for 10 or 12 years. 
uh, on a reasonable scale, it's growing and growing and growing to the point that they've been able to commercialise it with very mixed successes. Um, in the UK, there hasn't been a substantial work of logging team for very long. Um, there have always been a few pioneers, but um, it's not been a great scale. Um, the rather moribund UK local newspaper market, with these giant kind of sovereignty companies staggering around, you know, burp from debt, um, is not complete with innovation. I think even Sarah and the Guardian did a brilliant job innovating with, with the city based blocks. Uh, the business, you know, in the end of the day, there wasn't enough ad sales behind it to actually sustain it commercially. Um, Guardian Group as a whole and, uh, have been very good in promoting the existence of the five local blocks of interest. Tremendously healthy. I think that's in the spirit of the Scott Trust. But charities, um, remember, are not democratically accountable in any way. Um, and so there is no pressure on them to organise the way they communicate unless it's absolutely clearly attached uh, to their campaign needs. And um, I think certainly. You see some charities that they sell, but the majority of charities don't have the same pressures that even the councils have on them through democracy to modernise the way they engage, and that's a shame. It's all been about numbers until really, really recently. You couldn't, there was, there was no point trying to make a talk to a council unless you were going to be reaching like 60,000 people, and that's why they didn't get the advertising. And, um, and, and at least now there's a recognition that small areas, you know, no one's been interested in small places for years. Yeah. It's just starting to come back. Yeah, it's great because we're giving, as we go around the country, we'll talk about local, we'll help give communities a voice that we've never had in the media. It's fantastic. We, we actually, there's a lovely one in a uh, town in, in Herringshire called Kington, where we did some work two years ago um, in as one of our first websites, and we helped uh, local people create this, this remarkable site, which started off at wordpress.com and then now it's self hosted wordpress.org install. Um, and this site caused an enormous explosion of democratic discussion. In, in this very small town of 5,000 people in isolated heritage of regular Wales. Um, and uh, it's, we're delighted, you know, I, I, we, we suspect it's made some contribution, but we can't prove it, to the fact that they completely cleaned out the council in the elections this, this spring. Because for the first time this, this community had a public space where they could talk um, publicly about affairs in the town. Now, I can't evidence that, I can't back it up, it just seems to be a uh, no strong coincidence. Like Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I won't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe uh, it's been lovely, 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 lovely to help give people a uh, voice in all these communities that we've worked in. Um, and uh, one of the things we love, and one or two communities say, just, yeah, yeah, we saw you were promoting our website. Don't do it, don't do it, because we don't want anyone to know it's there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless, you know, you're having this lovely discussion. So, no, it might affect house prices if people know it's there. I said, well, you just use Google, you do come up now. You know, <laughs> kind of topping Google for your time. Just a very straightforward point about the two-way nature of this. Um, in my little village in Poynings in Sussex, there's a, there's a chap who runs the Poynings website and you can't interact with it. And, and so I built this little sp spreadsheet-based um, thing which was about people sharing their lawnmowers and stuff just as part of a little city camp project. And um, as soon as he advertised it, um, my little site, somebody from Australia posted a comment about how her grandma grew up in Poynings and that she was happy to, if anyone came to Sydney, uh, tell, them, <laughs> tell, them, tell them the ropes. And, uh, so she had, to, she had to find her way to a Google spreadsheet to actually put, share that bit of, bit of, uh, bit of stuff. Um, with, with people, so those kinds of sites yeah, uh, are, are, school, isn't it? Are, are old school and, school and you can't interact with them and so people are desperate for it is, is my point, people are desperate to actually be able to, to, to share and that's what this is all about. Thank you. Okay, we've all got a session to